everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be explaining twin turbos. Now this isn't the place to learn how turbochargers work, so if you don't already know how turbochargers work, I'd recommend checking out my video uh, explaining that. So twin turbos. Um, in this video I'm going to be explaining two different setups, um, one parallel and one sequential, both of which are going to utilize the same size turbo, uh, just have two of them, um, but they're going to use them in different ways. Now there's another uh, type out there which uses different size turbos, which I will explain in a future video. So the first and the most, the most simple setup to basically understand is parallel, and basically all you're doing is you're having two separate turbochargers uh, for two separate cylinder banks. So it's almost like you've got two separate turbocharged engines. So here we've got a V6, you can see the cylinder banks, um, and you've got your two intakes. So here's your two turbochargers. Uh, basically during your exhaust stroke, uh, you're going to have exhaust come out through these exhaust manifolds, spin up the turbos, the turbos are going to pull in air, the air will go through the intercooler, through the throttle to the intake manifold, to the cylinders, and then repeat that process. So it's just like with a regular turbocharger, the only difference is you've got two cylinder banks, so you split up the work uh, between two turbochargers. So Things to keep uh, to note on parallel is that both turbos are always going to be active um, for the entire RPM range. Uh, well, they may not say you size them so that they spool up at a higher RPM. Um, that's fine, but point is they're both uh, always going to have exhaust flow directed towards them. And both turbos are the same size as I mentioned. Now another type of turbo setup is sequential. So here we've got a four-cylinder engine, and basically what happens here is you have one turbo active at low RPM, and then both turbos active at a higher RPM when you have more exhaust flow. So at low RPM, you've only got a single turbo active. And here we have a bypass valve, and this is basically what shuts off this turbo. So if air isn't allowed to pass through here, it's not going to be able to spool up, um, and it's not going to be able to put any boost uh, through this uh, piping. So basically what happens is, after your exhaust stroke, all your exhaust is going to be directed to this turbo here. And so it's going to spool up this turbo, and then it's going to pull in air through this intake along this channel. And so it'll send that air up here into the intercooler, through your throttle, into your intake manifold, and then into your engine, and then it'll just keep recirculating like that. Um, and then, of course, out the exhaust here. Now, why would you only have one turbo spooling at low RPM? Well, the reason is you don't have that much exhaust, so you couldn't uh, spool up both of these turbos with the limited amount of exhaust, exhaust that you're making, so you send all of it to one turbo, and that's enough to spool it up and create boost for the engine. Now, at higher RPM scenarios, uh, this bypass valve is going to open up. You're going to have a lot more exhaust, and so all of that exhaust is going to be directed to both of these turbos, so they'll both be pulling in air, bring it to the intercooler, through the engine, and then they'll continue spooling up both uh, of these turbos, and then finally out the exhaust. So basically the reason you can do that is because you have more exhaust flow. And once again, both of these turbos are the same size. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Uh, and in my next video, I'll be explaining a twin turbo setup in which you have different sized turbochargers.